Welcome to the gag reflex. You gonna say anything or just sit there with a stupid <laughs> smile on your face, Christ? Are you gonna share your story, Jack? You said you I, have a great story. I have a me. great story. Okay, here's my story. So, uh, you know, out in East Texas, we have this little place where we go, me and my family, and there's this shrimp broil that they really like over there. That I, I, you know, or uh, crawfish. Sorry, I can't stand crawfish. I think they're repulsive. You get a little bit closer, she'll be louder. And um, so, well, like the chair can be louder. Yeah, I like the chair noises in the background. So, you know, they. It was like the beginning of Lent or something. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. So, <laughs> for whatever reason, apparently you can't eat meat or something on Lent. Yeah. So, have you been under a rock? <laughs> Sorry. So, we went to this place because apparently, like, fish is okay and, like, crustaceans. So, we were there and, um, you know, we went there. I hate this place and I complain. I said, I don't want to go there. It's called a Big Sandy Crawfish Broil. We get there and just cause, cause mostly you know most seafood really just grosses me out. Like I don't like fish or anything. I, I don't know. It's a weird. No, thing. I'm the same way. Yeah, and even worse than fish are like crustaceans, like you know shrimp and stuff. Right. So we're there, and um, so you know I look at the menu and everything's like super expensive, and it's just this trashy ass place. It's um, a bunch of people. You know they've all got the cowboy hats and everything, and it's, like, this open area, and, they're like, you know, every other table has about three or four people smoking cigarettes. So the entire place is just this whirlpool of, like, smoke. And, you know, the cigarettes, like, that's bearable, but the one thing was there was this guy over at the bar who kept smoking cigars. Right. And just, like, cigarette smoke I can stand, but cigar smoke makes me sick to my stomach. Are you serious? I, I cannot Usually stand it. Usually it's the other way around. Uh-uh. It, it just, it's that sweetness and that thickness of it just totally messed me up. Just clogs your arteries. Yeah, and I start, you know, kind of sweating really hard. And then and like, you have this sense of impending doom. Right. <laughs> I feel like the world is closing in on me. So we're sitting there, and it's, you know, it's just an unpleasant environment. Oh, and we were also with my school counselor. She lives near us out there. So we went to dinner with her and her whole family. Oh, she lives on the lake house. With you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and, um, you know, we're all there and everything. And I guess, you know, it was a pleasant dinner. And um, I ordered this grilled chicken. And it took way longer to come out than anyone else's food because most people ordered fried stuff. So, like, it would be, like, fried shrimp or whatever. But there was me and then this guy who ordered grilled shrimp who it took much longer for us to get out. So I was eating, like, a ton of hush puppies and, like, french fries before right. that. So, you know, I'm, like, you know, I'm pretty much full there. Well, then this comes, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll look like an idiot if I don't eat this now. So I start eating it, and it's charred. The outside is just crispy and black. I'm like, okay, you know what, whatever, I'll eat it, you know, I'll take one for the team. So I eat all this stuff, and afterwards, I'm kind of bloated, and, um, you know, everything was good, we finished up dinner, and then we went home, and I was in bed, and I was laying around doing whatever, and then I just felt, like, really sick, I just horribly sick, so I get up, and I go to the bathroom, I'm like, oh, no, I'm, you know, I'm, this chicken's coming back upstream, right. and it didn't happen. Okay, you know, it's all good. So I walk back to the bedroom, and I, you know, stand in the door and everything, well, then I sprint back around, you know, go back to the bathroom, and I spent the rest of the night vomiting up this stupid chicken. That's my story. That's terrible. So, it wasn't the seafood they got to you. It was the chicken. You know so what that... they did? They're like, this is a seafood <laughs> restaurant. Who here is ordering chicken? <laughs> this turd, you know. <laughs> they just uh, picked up the chicken, the one chicken that they yeah. have in the back for people who don't like seafood. It's not, even, it's not even in the fridge. It's covered in, like, mold and, yeah. like, polio. Right. Polio. <laughs> <laughs> Can't move your leg while you're vomiting. Right, right, right. Going all FDR on everyone's ass. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And then the next morning, I went with my brother to go see the Batman vs. Superman movie. Which, which you know... Terrible. Right? It was, oh, it was awful. Awful movie. But, um, so, you know, we're out in East Texas, so we drove about, uh, half an hour to get to this little town that had a movie theater and everything. And, uh... You know, just white trash ass town. They've got like a Whataburger, a did Brahms, and a Walmart, and then this movie theater, and then just like you know everything else is just super weird. And it's like, it'll be like you know window places or whatever, like places you can go to windows. It's so, like, you know, we're there and everything, and we go and we see this movie, and we get in there, and we're super early. Well, they have the same three commercials on loop. You know, it's like when you go to a movie theater here super early, and they play those commercials on loop. Except here, it was these three like homemade commercials. One of them was for uh, it was like. Travis Auto Supply, and it was this guy and his family who were there, and, like, they had the one daughter who looked like she was, like, emo or something, you know, she had, like, the, 
the weird haircut and everything. I hate this commercial. And so oh like, my God. it was pretty funny because they, you know, they had like the family picture, and yeah. she was like grimacing. <laughs> so, <laughs> the rest is like this poor little white trash family, and then they got the emo daughter. So that was pretty funny. So you know, we keep watching these commercials over and over again. We're like, wow, you know, this is shocking. This is like the second day that this has been out. You know, because it came out that Thursday night, and this was the Saturday. You know, I can't believe that there's no one here. Well, then, I guess, you know, all these other people figure out how to time it. So they all come in for the final loop of these commercials, and then the movie theater just fills up. And I swear to God, the average weight of that movie theater must have been 315 pounds. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And what's even better... All they better, have is a Brahms there. Right. So <laughs> these people are filling up on Brahms, Whataburger, and Walmart food. So, so they're all running around, and they've all brought their children with them, right? And um, so, you know, these... The big guys and everything, they all sit down, and it's all good, you know? That wasn't the issue. Well, then the issue was, once the movie starts, and all these kids get super riled up, and they were playing, they were playing, like, <laughs> Batman versus Superman in, like, the aisles. Like, they were chasing after each other, running around, so all you could hear throughout the entire movie was... And then you'd hear these, these people eating their snacks and everything and just gorging themselves on all this stuff. And then they'd get up and go get refills and everything. It was the most unpleasant movie-going experience I've ever had. And then... It got even better when um, Wonder Woman came on. These like this these four women sitting in the row behind us all just go yeah, you know, and they get super excited. And we're sitting there, and then um, you know Superman when he has like when he dies, he doesn't really die, but when he dies, that I did air quotes there. Then all these kids started like wailing and stuff. It was so incredibly unpleasant. <laughs> Not one kid is playing Superman is crying while the other one's going you lost. Yeah, <laughs> Batman was better. Yeah. <laughs> And, of course, we get out, and you hear them all saying, I don't understand, honey. Why were Superman and Batman fighting? I thought they were friends, you know, and, like, read the comic, idiot. <laughs> well, going back to the grilled chicken thing, I'll oh, share yeah. one of my most embarrassing stories. Go ahead. And it was just one of those minor things. You know how you have those things that you just think back to, and you just, like, kind of shudder you do yeah, yourself, yeah. But, like, real quick? No. Everybody has them. Yeah. This is one of mine, because it was, like, so I was with um, this girl for more, right? Uh, you know the our school dance. Yeah, yeah. And we were we went to that was this, a really good like subtle clarification for the people who weren't familiar there. Yeah, for anybody who goes to you know uh, Richardson High School or Sadie Hawkins dance, pretty much. Yeah. Okay, and sorry. Can, go, okay, and your khaki <laughs> pants. Um. So. We went there, and it has to do with grilled chicken, so that's what I was thinking about the entire oh, yeah. time. And so we sit down, and we ordered, you know, it was like a $7, like, grilled chicken, and we're like, okay, you want to do that? And we're like, sure, right? So we're, we're sitting around, and they bring out, like, everybody else gets, like, salads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They bring out two, like, turkeys to us. Like, they just killed the chicken, and, like, that's what everybody was waiting <laughs> on. And we're just, it was the most, I swear, it was the most embarrassing thing, because, like, you bring out, like, these, like, full, like, turkeys to, to us, and we're just like, uh, this was $7. $7, wow. $7 at the Brio, in case you want to go buy a bird. <laughs> like, you're late for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Like, uh. And then we tried to get up, and, like, we were just, I guess we were just, like, embarrassed or something like that, right? So we forgot to pay and had to go uh. back into the restaurant. It's one of those, like, cringe, it's just like, yeah. oh my gosh. That's why I think the optimum date idea is you go to McDonald's, and you use your coupons that you have, you know, because you're not going to go to McDonald's without coupons. And what you do is you buy a ton of McNuggets, and you offer the girl all the McNuggets, and you just take the skins. So you right. peel these skins off of the McNuggets, and you eat them while she eats the, uh, the you know, the meat. Or if you just did that at KFC, it might be a little weird. Same but... same deal, you know. Right. It's It's a solution to everyone's problems. Fast food... Is the way of the future, you know. Right. Yeah. Honestly, I was just thinking about you know, deep frying cadavers. Like people, like human cadavers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you know, you get really hungry. Right. I mean, there are. You got a whole man. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> you. It's like you want a leg here, boy. Yeah. Um. Oh god! Every time I hear the word cadaver, all I can ever think of is um, my cousin had to get this gum surgery. So. For what? She had some sort of structural issues. I don't know. The hair lip? No, it wasn't hair lip. It was her gums, <laughs> not her lips. So, she had to, um, like, they they got extra gum tissue from this dead guy, and that's what they implanted in her mouth. 
like, can you imagine that? Like, every time you eat, like, oh, you know, yeah. like, part of this isn't me. You know, like, you taste, yeah. a, you taste like, a weird flavor. You're eating, like, super rare meat. You're like, oh, God, is this coming from the dead guy or the meat? <laughs> like, oh. I don't think it's like that. I don't know. I, oh, I would be freaking out all the time. There was this, so, I think I've talked about it before, mm. the ISM class that we're in. Yeah. So, I was doing some research on it and, like, what they do for ACL surgery. Uh-huh. And this guy... Uh, I was looking at malpractice and like about that oh, yeah? he had a had to have a total reconstruction of his ACL. Ooh, and which the, is a muscle. It's the ligament that controls like so whenever it contracts it like pulls along it pulls your leg around the bone. Okay. So if you don't have that then you're not well, your leg's just not gonna work. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. That so kind of attaches those two muscle groups together. Okay. And so what what happened with this guy is the. They took it from a dead person oh. who had just recently died, and they put it in there. But the guy that died had a knee infection, Ooh. and so whenever they put it in there, it was swelling up, and the doctor was like, okay, I'll give you some antibiotics. It's not a big deal. And the guy stopped taking the antibiotics because, like, I don't remember what the cause of it was, but it just said that he stopped taking the antibiotics. And his knee swelled up, and, like, he had to go, like, they had to go, like, tear out everything else Ooh. and, like, go clean it up. And dude is... One point five million dollars richer now, because he sued the doctor. For oh, for malpractice. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, so if you want some, get a, get a doctor that malpractices. <laughs> well, it's like you got a free surgery, didn't you? I didn't get a free surgery. No. Well, the, was it is you that the, the scar on them? Yeah. yeah. Got the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you got a free surgery for that. This is not like you won one free surgery because I screwed up. <laughs> well, like, I thought that's what it was. He left a scar on you, so you got a free surgery. No. Okay. So what happened was, uh, he so. It's a big old scar near his armpit. Right, it is. But what it used to be was revolting, and that's probably the... The reason you got the free surgery. <laughs> yeah, because she's like, this is disgusting. <laughs> but it was free, wasn't it? No, it wasn't free. How much was it? No. Well, like, I thought you got it... I was like, eight. Did you get, like, a discount for it or anything? No. He, well, I thought... he just said sorry. Oh. I like... thought that was... I thought that counted as, like, malpractice. No, so what he did was... He took out the mole, which is not a mole. It was disgusting. It looked like acne that was enlarged. Oh. It was it was like was hanging it like cancer? at that point. It was about to be. I okay. waited like two more years. Nice. Um, but so he took it off, and he sewed it up. But whenever he sewed it up, he used the stitches that dissolve. So you know what I'm talking about? Uh, so that you don't have to go back in, and he just thought it would be convenient. Yeah. But the problem is, is he set the date too soon to when I could start doing stuff. And so I was like, trying to throw a football whenever we were back in middle school. Uh, um, so I was trying to, like, throw a football around, you know, the, the day that he said I could go do that. Uh, and those stitches weren't healed yet, uh, and he could have either done this. He could have either extended the date, or he could have given me, like, the stitches that I had to go back in and, you know, get them fixed. Uh, but what ended up happening is it ripped, and so the scar is, like, twice, two to three times bigger than it should have been. So, like, it was your fault. No. Oh. No. Because I, I waited till the day that he told me I could. Oh. Uh, and I, I even felt it, and I was like, uh, oh, this is okay, right? Yeah. And then, like, once it tore, I was like, okay, well, now I'm screwed. Might as Whoops. Well just, <laughs> yeah. So might as well just keep going. Yeah. Oh, man. You, you don't do, like, blood or anything like that, right? Me? Yeah. What do you mean? Okay. I'm, I'm not, like, I don't know, like, my issue is, like, watching, like, every time I see, like, a, that's, that, that's the thing that revolts me. It's like, you know, people, you see those, like, shocking videos or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, like, people send it to you, and you open up, and you're like, oh, my God, you know, the worst ones for me are those surgery videos. Oh, holy crap. Like, um, I was talking about the other day, knee replacements. Like, I saw some video of this guy getting a knee replacement, and the way it looked like was, um, you know, because they have to put it in place and everything. And it was this guy, you know, they'd already done all the open stuff, and then he had this, like, pipe almost looking thing sticking out of his knee that was then it had like this rubber piece on the end that was like a big disc almost right so it was like a giant nail in effect and the idea was then this the doctor you know he has a bunch of nurses holding this guy's leg up <laughs> and the doctor takes this mallet and he swings it like a like a rubber uh. mallet he swings it like a baseball bat and he's hitting this thing on there and it keeps you know bumping into this knee and the idea is it pushes the kneecap into place and i saw that and i was like oh you know, fuck that, I'm not, I'm not going to be a doctor, you know? Yeah. The medical, the medical uh, life is not one for me. Ugh. Honestly, I just wish we had more witch hunts. so that wouldn't Witch happen. hunts? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, because the, the way I think about that is they're kind of modern-day witch doctors, right? 
So. Well, they're normal docs. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll go <laughs> along with it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the modern day witch doctor. Okay, right? I'll, go, I'll, I'll play along with this. So, because, like, if you walked in on that, you wouldn't think modern medicine. You'd probably right, think, like, if like, you took, if you took, like, you know, Christopher Columbus or some guy from the 1400s to modern day and had him watch a surgery, they'd be like, who is this savage? What does he do? He like poor man. <laughs> <laughs> Except it would be like Christopher Columbus, so he'd say it in Italian, you know, but same difference. Oh, Mamma mia! Did you look like it hurts? You know, <laughs> that's a spicy meatball. Anyway, it's they're the modern day witch doctors. Okay. Right? So if you walk in on that happening, five minutes later, you have twenty guys with pitchforks and torches outside ready to lynch you. And if you can swim in the river, then no. you're a witch. But if you drown, you're not a witch. Mm. <laughs> so, what you're talking about, just to clear this up, is you're talking about going out and rounding up doctors. <laughs> yeah. And drowning them. <laughs> Not drowning them, we're just witch testing them. Okay, okay, okay. So, what, are, like, the ones that actually are witches. Right. You know, they crawl out of the river and then we kill them. <laughs> okay, it makes sense. And it's kind of a foolproof method when you think about it, you know? Yeah. See, and then you can save the town of McKinney. Right. The witches were going to overrun us. Well, that was what we had today was uh, the police officer came in and talked to us about, like, uh, probable cause and stuff like that. Oh, that was, that is the best day. Oh, it was, it was pretty fun. That dude's hilarious. I was kind of nervous when he came in because, you know, like, don't talk to the cops, you know, popo shut you down, down. And, Excuse me? And, um, so he came up there and he was, like, telling jokes and stuff. Like, he was talking about, he, you know, he's going around and he's like, you know, what's your name? Yeah, uh, what it was, it was, um, oh, Roxana and Tate Jesse. He goes to him and he goes, Okay, Tate, you know, you come over to Roxana's house, and you find her, and there's a dead body on the floor, and Roxana's sitting at the table, nibbling on the leg. <laughs> 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 what do you do? <laughs> you know, stuff like that, like, is it legal for you to arrest her for this, or is it not? And, uh, turns out, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Really? Yeah. Cannibalism. No, not, well, not the cannibalism part, but if you, like, find someone committing a crime. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the information I probably never use again. Yeah. Unless you're a police officer. That's true, but I don't really want to be a police officer. No? I had one of my friends, I'm not going to say his name, but he told me that his life goals, which, they're both really admirable, uh -huh. but they're just so far apart that it's funny. Okay. He goes, whenever I get older, I either want to be a pastor or a cop. Okay. I was like, I don't know, it was just kind of really funny to me. It was like, there's two very different things. Right. It's not, it's not like you just have one passion and you're kind of all over the place. My passion is religion and criminal justice. <laughs> yeah. I really like the I really like the chapter with the Ten Commandments. You know, what the Book of Revelations is my favorite. <laughs> okay, but going off of that, uh -huh. you see the show Cops, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, who hasn't? Yeah, right. Everyone loves Cops. I was actually watching one last night. Oh, and probably the funniest one I've ever seen because this lady was sitting in her car. Uh, and she was on the phone, and she had just ran over somebody. And he was fine. He was the one who actually called the police on her for running over. Okay. Deal is, she did it in the parking lot, right? Uh, to, like, her house. They live in kind of an apartment complex. Okay. And then she just went and parked right after she did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so the cops show up, because after the guy who got ran over, he's calling the cops, and he's got, like, blood all over him. And they're like, who got ran over here? And he's like, I did. <laughs> and they were like, who ran? What, what did the car look like? And he was like, it was that car over there. <laughs> so they go running over there. And then they tap on the window with these flashlights. And this girl's on the phone. And she, she turns to the cop. And she holds up a finger. And she, <laughs> and she, tells, she tells the cops to wait. And she goes, she goes no. And, um, <laughs> and then they go back over to the guy. And they're like, and I was like, just break the window already. And she ran over somebody. But no, they go back over to the guy. And they're like, excuse me, do you have a key to the car? <laughs> and, and he goes, yeah. And they're like, why do you have a key to the car? And, I'm, and, they're, and he goes, because that's my wife. <laughs> and it's like, it's, but they, that's not even the best part. So then they go and they open the door and they're asking nicely. They're like, can you please get out of the car? And she goes, just a minute. Hold on. And then, so they wait, like, ten minutes. Uh, and they finally start trying to drag this girl while she's on the phone, and she's okay. screaming. And the guy opens the other side of the door, and he has a taser, right? Uh -huh. And he's like, I'm going to tase you, ma'am. I'm going to tase you. And she goes, 
He goes, no, you're not. And he, <laughs> and he shoots her, and she goes limp and oh, falls no. on the ground. And she's, like, <laughs> screaming and, like, and, like cussing, cussing the cops out. And he goes, he goes, the bomb's still in you. I can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. And so and so she starts trying to like get up and run away or whatever and he does it again and the dude the, the cop starts laughing at her. Oh <laughs> no. It was so funny. It was probably the funniest episode. And then they end it and then they're like, That's why we don't run over kids or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that's the way they like wrap those episodes up is they always have some sort of lesson, you know? Yeah. Like they'll bust like a meth lab and it turns out the dude's a high school dropout, you know, and he's he's like running this meth lab and they arrest him with him. This is why you finish high school, you know? It's like, thanks, cops. Yeah. You're right, so, now I won't go get 100 Why exactly do you want to change. attend the uh, Harvard University? Well, I watched this episode of Cops, and they told me <laughs> education was important. <laughs> I feel like that's just like... It's kind of like saying that you smoke weed if you say, I watched an episode of Cops last night. <laughs> it, just, it just has that stigma to it. It's like, oh, this is the sort of guy who sits on his couch at home and watches cops. You know? Either you're a 50 year old man, uh, or you're doing things that you shouldn't be. Oh god, like you know, you gotta wonder, like some of those TV shows, who watches them? Like there was one I was watching the other day, and it's um, My 600 Pound Life. Which yes. I guess I'm the sort of person who watches that. I guess, but like, is that what you're going for? Is that your goal? It's 600 pounds. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what else would I do? But um, Go to college. Yeah, <laughs> or I could be on a show and get free gastric bypass surgery. So <laughs> this show, this episode, I don't know if that's the way the show is always structured because I don't generally watch it. I was just watching it on that occasion. But it would, what, the way it was was they would find these people who were 600 pounds, follow them around, and, um, oh, like there was one and it was showing this, they are filming this woman rolling around the supermarket on her little, like, stroller thing, you know? And the little scooter. Cars. Scooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, the, it was like, you know, videotaping her would like show things that people were saying that was like offensive, you know? It's right. so, like one of them, she drives past this group of like five old men who are sitting there looking at all the beer and they hear one of them say, there's some cushion for the pushing. And they all, no. start, they all start laughing. And she kind of looks at the camera and she does almost like that, uh, the way that Jim looks at the camera on The Office, you know? Just and really, just like, zooms in on her yeah. face. And, um, <laughs> so that, you know, they follow these people around. They're probably, I think I probably watched um, maybe four or five different people. So, like, this particular woman, she, you know, ended up, you know, she had this gastric bypass done, which I didn't really realize what it was, but when they're doing the surgery, you know, they're removing part of the stomach. Right. So, it wasn't showing the whole surgery, but they're also, on these people, because they're so morbidly obese, that they were, like, you know, they were laying down all day, and they'd get these weird growths of fat. Yeah. And, like, specific here. So, not only would they, you know, have the big, like, thighs and calves, but they'd also have, like, on the inside and outside of their knees, they'd have these huge, like, sacks, almost, like, like uh, trash bag size dollops of fat, you know, and they would cut those off, too, so, you know, these people sit around for a while, and then they're able to walk around, it's like, this one woman was super happy, because she was finally able to sit in the back seat of a car, you know, and that was actually sort of touching to watch, but I got, my heart warmed, because I watched my 600-pound life, but, um, so, you know, it was really interesting, and then, you know, so, then she ended up losing a ton of weight, and, you know, she was, like, happy and everything, it was, like, a success story, you know, right. then there were the other ones, where, um, it was this woman who, they got the surgery done, and she was, so, she's lying in bed, and she keeps asking for them to bring her pudding, so they keep bringing her pudding, and she's just, like, scarfing all this pudding, and they're like, you know, it's this Indian doctor, and he comes, and he's like, ma'am, you're going to need to stand up and walk around if you want to lose the weight from this surgery, and, no, I can't move, my legs hurt, and she ended up gaining even more back. Are you serious? Uh -huh. And there was the other end of the spectrum, which was this guy, afterwards, he started losing just a ton of weight. And, uh, you know, it was, like, really impressive. And they're like, wow, you know, you're really focused on this and everything. And it had this one video of him, because, you know, they have, like, videographers following them for, like, ten years, you know, visiting right. them and everything. And, like, they do, like, home videos, because the idea is then they do a montage of whether or not it was successful. Well, after a few years, it shows him, and he's sitting around at his house with a bunch of his friends, and he's like, you know, he's, you know, super trashy. And he's like, yeah, tonight we're going out for a night on the, night on the town. We're going to go to the club and do some dancing. And he goes, woo! And he goes to stand up, and he just falls over on his face, and like, in front of his coffee table, and he's laying there, and then the camera gets up, and they follow him and everything, his friends are all checking on him and everything, and it turns out, he just went into a coma, like, right serious? then and there. So they take him to the hospital and everything, apparently, 
you know, the rapid weight loss was because he'd been doing a lot of cocaine and, and crack. So he was using hard drugs, and that was what was helping him lose all his weight. And his body just shut down. So he was in this coma for a long time. He came back out, and not only had he gained back a ton of the weight, but now he was paralyzed. Oh so, so, yeah. So that show really has its ups and downs. So that's, what? Yeah, right? So you're watching this, you know, your heart's warm. You're like, well, yeah, you know, this guy, you know, he's finally able to go to the club and do some dancing on a night out on the town again, and then he falls over and he's in a coma for that's like terrible. he was in a coma for I think two years it was. Oh, crazy stuff. That's like the guy from Red Lobster. Have you heard that story? Uh-uh. He ate okay, so you know those so you sit down and the first thing that they bring you is those butter rolls. Have you ever uh, been to Red Lobster? Yeah. So you know those butter rolls that yeah. they bring you? Well apparently it's a big thing to there's like a world record for how many oh, you can no. eat, right? World record just, just take a guess at how many it was that you could down. A hundred? Three times plus. Three hundred? Three hundred and eighty was the previous one. <laughs> this okay. guy ate four hundred and eight of those butter rolls in one sitting and went into Before a... Before his food got there. <laughs> yeah. Or... yeah, then he ate his food. No. no. Okay, okay. So it was just like sitting and just eating the rolls. Yeah, so okay. he was just trying to break the record. Okay. And he went... To There's no the... time limit. It's just in one sitting. Yeah. Okay. So he broke, he broke the record. He got yeah. it. But it came with... He went into a butter-induced coma, is what they called it. Oh, my God. And, and two months later, the guy was still in it. Like, That's awful. I still don't... Like, I don't know, because I haven't checked on him since, I guess. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's still in it. Well, you gotta wonder, at the point where you're eating 408 of those rolls, you gotta be pretty much asking for it, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, they probably wake up in the morning, they go, well... Today, should I kill myself <laughs> or go and eat 408 butter rolls, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I bet people on My 600 Pound Live, like, they should break that record right before oh, they start right. losing weight. Absolutely, you know? Uh, and they could probably do it. So this one was talking about how she'd have, like, a meal every hour, like a full-on meal. So she'd be like, yeah, you know, I wake up at 7 o'clock and I have breakfast, and then at 8 o'clock I have another breakfast, and 9 o'clock I have breakfast, 10 o'clock I have a snack, 11 o'clock I have lunch, 12, my second lunch, 1 o'clock, my third lunch, 2 o'clock, my snack, 3 o'clock, another snack, 4 o'clock, dinner. And, like, literally every hour, every waking hour this woman was eating. And, like, four of these meals were dessert. Crazy stuff. What the heck? Right? I guess that's how you do it. I that's mean, like how hobbits live. Because <laughs> what do they have? Out. What? I don't know anything about hobbits. You didn't watch Lord of the Rings? No, I really wanted to. Oh, man. It's, it's like... I want to be a nerd, but I just haven't got around <laughs> to it. You just can't dedicate it. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's, that's like, part of the thing is they're, like, super upset because they're, like, listing all these different meals that they have. And they have all these really weird names, like, there's breakfast, second breakfast, elevensies, you know, and all this stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I've heard they're really good movies. But... Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, I, I think I've already talked about that, though, huh. like, with the girl who eats pizzas every waking hour and the person has to facilitate it. No, what? It. I, I talked about it in the first podcast. Oh, well... Yeah, but... Go ahead and tell the story again, because I don't remember it, and... They pro- no, <laughs> no, nobody's <laughs> going to. But, I mean, this lady sits around, and she's... I think it was... I don't think it was 600. It was probably, like, 400, 500, which is still... Pizzas? No. Like, that was her weight. Oh, okay. Which is still pretty substantial, oh. I would say. But, so... She, she, she can't move at this point. Like, yeah. She's to the point where she's immobilized. Okay. And so... But her sister... Is facilitating her eating because she keeps bringing her pizza. And, uh, like, that's all she's been eating for, like, a year or whatever. Uh, and, the like, at that point, why would you not, like, try and help the person out? Because, obviously, right. they're going to have to eat whatever you give them. Oh, my so God. So, why don't you just bring them, like, a salad and, like, try to, like, starve them out before they, like, try and move by themselves. And eventually it got to the point where they had to, like, teach her how to walk again because she hadn't been up in so oh long. God. That's just, like, um... There's an episode of My Strange Addiction. God, it's honestly, it's kind of upsetting me how much daytime television I watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you have time for that? <laughs> you know, Strange Addiction here, My 600 Pound Life there, it just you know, happened. Um, but this woman, what she did was she would eat, like, pottery, like flower pots and stuff. She'd break off chips of it. And then her family was like, okay, you know what? We can't have these around anymore. So they stopped. Well, then she started eating cigarette ashes. <laughs> <laughs> so and they're like, oh my God, you know, we stop. So they start buying, they, you know, they bring back all the pottery and everything because, like, okay, that's better than cigarette ashes, right? right. And they, well, then she's eating both. 
So they stopped smoking, and then she's just eating this pottery, and then um, then they were on the show, and like apparently it was like horrible for her. It was like messing up her stomach and stuff. But oh god, you know, and like you gotta wonder like how, you know, like you said, you know, not only you know how do you let this happen to yourself, but then how do people you know let that happen to you? Just like in a, in Step Brothers, you remember. Uh, they're all laughing at their like childlike nature, and then the, the psychiatrist or whatever is like, "You're enabling them. You think you're helping, but you're not." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, have you ever seen um, Train Simulator? Yes. Where they go yeah. off the rails and everything. Yeah. Um, oh god, the best things I've ever seen. There were these, you know, those montages that you have for like Call of Duty with all the dubstep and stuff. Yes. It was those except for like Train Simulator and Farming Simulator. <laughs> so it have like all these like this, you know, like dubstep and stuff, and yeah. then. Uh, it would be like these crazy like zoom ins and stuff of a uh, of train simulators. It'd be like a train going down the track, and um, oh, that's God. just embarrassing. Why would you upload a video? Well, it was, it was a joke. It was a joke. Well, I'm saying like for like people who actually do that uh, for serious, like for for like Call of Duty. All right, guys, welcome to my train simulator let's play. Today I will be driving a Santa Fe Express. Yeah. Think about it though. It's like. Yeah, I got a headshot with a sniper rifle again the other day. Yeah. Eh. Uh. Three sixty no scope. You upload a video with dumb stuff. Like you're just asking me to beat up at that point, aren't you? Pretty, well, I don't know. I bet most of those people are probably like ex-military, though. You know? Like no, I think they're up. just I bet, like no, I bet they're like olds. I bet they're like spec ops. You know? Like really? Green berets. Yeah. I mean, who else plays Call of Duty? And so, like, while they're while they're playing Call of Duty in their living room, they're like actually like barrel rolling and like yeah. taking cover. And like sometimes they'll have like flashbacks of like this is exactly what I did to those damn terrorists in Kuwait. You know? <laughs> so this time I'm not gonna let you die, Jimmy. <laughs> well, that was like you know some of the dumbest things I've ever seen. One of them was a it was an advertisement for I think like Battlefield Three, where it was this um they had this military guy like some you know ex military dude who uh like came in and he played it like he was an actual military guy. So like you know like he he wasn't just running and gunning like people normally do in video games because that's what's fun. Right. He was like, wow, these guys really act like real soldiers. They know when to follow you and they know when to split up. And like it was uh. One of the most like awkward things I've ever seen. It's like fifteen minutes of this dude. And it was like a, it was a promotional thing. And, you know, he's talking about you know he, he, he like he'll say like cover my six and like you know he this guy <laughs> knows that these are computer characters and they can't hear him. Oh, Christ. Maybe he's just having some PTSD. Maybe and like they didn't realize it. <laughs> they were yeah. just like inciting this guy's horrible flashback. It's mm. kind of terrible, but it happens. Well, partners, it's been in gab wheel flag, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounded like the water boy. 